I'm going to start running the canine vaccine check antibody test kit. This test includes a development plate as well as the test comb. Before starting this test, it's best to let it warm up to room temperature. This kit has been out at room temperature for two hours. We'll be using today five serum samples that we obtained from five different dogs. Since we have five samples, we'll be using five of the teeth on our comb. The rest of the teeth we will just replace back into the container and seal it up. We'll open up the first five spots for our five samples. I'm just gently mixing the plate to make sure all of your reagents have been sufficiently mixed. So to run the, the canine vaccine check kit, you'll need a pipette man to draw up your five microliters or the kit does also recommend a unit of 40 capillary tube and a piston since you are dealing with such a small volume of sample. I just am mixing the first sample. I'll be adding five microliters of serum into the spot 1A. I then mix the sample several times to make sure everything is properly mixed. Again, five microliters of my second sample, and I'll be putting this into A2. And my fifth sample. If you don't have a vortex, you can just mix the two back and forth just to make sure everything is properly mixed. So after all of my, cell, my samples have been added to the plate, I'm now going to take the comb and insert it into the samples. Again, properly mixing all the samples. And now my plate will sit for an incubation period of five minutes at room temperature. Our first five minute incubation period is now up. So we'll use the tweezers that come with the kit to open the next set of wells in B. So we'll be opening B1 through 5. We have mixed our comb. And we'll now be blotting it off just on a paper towel before we insert the comb into the next row, B. Again, mixing it briefly. And now this incubation period will set for two minutes. Following the two minutes, the second incubation, we're going to open up the third row of wells, C. And again, as with our first set of samples, we're going to remove the comb and just blot it gently to remove any excess reagent from the comb. Now that it's blotted, we'll insert it into C. Again, focusing on the mixing to make sure all reagents are properly mixed. The C incubation time will be for five minutes. Now that our five minute incubation period is complete, I will open the next row of test wells, row D.
again blatting off the teeth of the comb before inserting it into the next row. This incubation period will go for two minutes. Our two minute incubation period is over, so I'll next open row E. Again using the tweezers from the kit. Before removing the comb, I'm gently mixing up and down, tapping off the comb to blot any excess reagent, and now inserting it into E. Again, gently mixing. We'll now have another two minute incubation period. All right, our last incubation period is over, so we'll move now into the last row, row F. Again, using the tweezers from the kit, I'm opening up the last of the wells, mixing, blotting dry, and inserting into F. The incubation for row F will continue for five minutes. Our five minute incubation period is now complete in F. This is, as you can see, the color development stage. We're going to blot the teeth of the comb, and now to fix the color, we are going to insert it back into row E. Again, gently mixing. The comb will now sit for two minutes. Now that our two minute incubation period is complete, the color reaction on our teeth completed and fixed. So now we'll blot the teeth dry and we'll now wait for the comb to dry completely so that we can read the results. As you saw as we developed the color reaction on the comb there were critical control points that were observed during the development of the, the color. During the comb incubation for wells A, C, and F we made sure to completely mix our comb in our reagents. We did this at the start of the incubation, in the middle of the incubation, and then again briefly before moving it into the next row for development. Since we have not utilized all of the wells available on this plate, we can seal them and store them at refrigerator temperature or 4 degrees Celsius. As you can see, each reaction plate can hold up to 12 samples. Since we've only ran half of the plate, again we will reseal it and store it. Using a piece of tissue from inside the box, I'm going to wrap the plate store it in a resealable bag and then label it with the date and my initials. The remaining teeth on the comb I had already inserted into the holder. It was taped closed. I'll also date and initial. These will be stored back into the Vaxi checkbox and stored at 4 degrees C.